Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Gladeville United Methodist Church. We are so happy to have you worship. Our opening hymn this morning is um, number 338. Please stand as you're able as we sing together. Words will also be on the screen. responsive reading this morning Psalm 81 verses 1 through 10 please respond in the bold sing aloud to God our strength shout for joy to God of Jacob raise the song sound the tambourine the sweet lyre with the harp blow the trumpet at the new moon at the full moon on our feast day for it is a statue for Israel 
Joseph when God went out over the land of Egypt. I hear a voice I do not know. I relieved your shoulder of the burden. Your hands were free from the basket. In distress you called, and I delivered you. I answered you in the secret place of thunder. I tested you at the waters of Meribah. Hear, O my people, while I admonish you. O Israel, if you would but listen to me. There shall be no strange God among you. You shall not bow down to a foreign God. I am the Lord your God, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Open wide your mouth, and I will fill it. You may be seated. Let's take just a moment to prepare our hearts as we come into a time of prayer. Good and gracious God, we come humbly before you this morning. We give you thanks for all of the many blessings in our lives. We thank you for your love and your support because we know that everything comes from you. Father, we give you thanks for Wilma and ask that you be with her as she shares your message with us this morning. We lift up those that are on our hearts this morning, those that are in need of your healing touch. You, Lord, are the great physician and we know that you can help those that are in need. We ask that you pour out your love, your comfort, and your healing on them. Whether those needs are physical or mental or spiritual, you know best how to reach them, Lord. And we ask for your forgiveness this morning. As we know, we don't always say or do those things that we know we should. And then sometimes we do and say things we know we shouldn't. We ask for your wisdom and your courage to be able to follow your teachings and that you'll help us to get back on the right track when we do go astray. And now, Father, let us give back to you the prayer that Jesus taught us when we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we've come to the time in the service where we um, give back to the Lord some of what he's given to us. If the ushers would come forward, please.
God for these kids, the givers, and for everything that you have given to us. Please use this to build a church. an anthem. was beautiful thank you as the choir is coming down um, our scripture reading this morning it comes from Matthew um, it's chapter 11 verses 28 through 31 if you want to follow along in your Bible or it will also be on the screen Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will fall, find rest in your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It's the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So I'd like to welcome Wilma this morning um, to bring the message. She lives here in Woodlawn, is married, and has three children and two beautiful granddaughters. She began years ago preaching to her washer and dryer. Um, soon she had cutting CDs with sermons that were distributed to truck drivers and available at truck stop stops, and that ministry grew. Wilma was awarded the Harry Denman Award for, for Excellence in Evangelism from the United Methodist Church at Annual Conference several years ago. She now has Open Heart Ministries online with hundreds of followers. She's a true believer and follows God's leading even when it is difficult and often doesn't seem logical. She has spoken in many of the um, churches in the New River District over the years, 
and is asked back again and again because of her spiritual and heartfelt messages. So today she brings to us the words that Wilma has placed on her heart. And Wilma? I guess that makes it a little less intimidating when you know I talk to washers and dryers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, the Lord had put in my heart to, to uh, this sermon, and when I got in here, uh, a few things had changed. I, f I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in this place so much today, and you guys should be honored to know that. I go many places, and I know the difference. Um, I wanted, uh, I've got a few notes here, and I wanted to bring out a message, and I wanted to give two testimonies, one of my father, and one of uh, my dear brother-in-law, Bill, who has passed away. And these testimonies are what happened when they did come unto Christ. And uh, this is the greatest invitation that was ever given, was given by Jesus Christ. And as I looked at Matthew, I wondered how this made sense. But leading up to that, I, I mean, if you take the whole chapter leading up to what Jesus said, I can just... Just imagine Jesus giving this invitation, but there are several things that happened in the chapter alone leading up to it. First, in uh, Matthew uh, 1 through 3, we find a very discouraged saint, John the Baptist. And he was isolated, he was in prison. And as I was just sitting here this morning, I was just wondering how many of us have ever been discouraged. Uh, we've had the isolation of COVID. We've had the isolation. And, you know, this invitation is not... I don't know if people get it, but it was not just for the lost. This invitation to come unto me is for everyone. Jesus made it very clear in this invitation it was for all. But the thing that I found amazing when I looked at John the Baptist in prison asking, and have we ever asked that question? Is this you, Jesus? Were things in our life, did they ever get so rough that we said to ourselves, just like John, do this doesn't make any sense. Do we need to go look for somebody else? But I love the answer that Jesus gave to John. He gave him a, 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 something only him and John would have ever known. And when Jesus re reassures us, sometimes in our discouragement, most of all, it's something that only we would know. Amen. And he discourages, and usually when we come unto him, and, I, and by the way, I borrowed your cross because I had a point to make at the end. hope you don't mind because I'm going to show you something about yoking up with Jesus. Uh, it's pretty amazing to me. But anyway, I, I wanted you to know that when you become discouraged, don't, don't let anyone tell you that you're a dirty, low-down rascals Christian because you get discouraged. I mean, we live in a real world. We live in a fallen world. Uh, we live in a world where we get discouraged. This is a discouraging place. This is not our home, folks. Amen. We're, we're just pilgrims passing through. We're going to get discouraged. And if you look at the way that Jesus Christ answered John and encouraged John and then turned around to the crowd, this is the way he defends you. He said, there is no greater, well, I didn't say this, Jesus said it. There is no greater man than John. And he'll say that to you. There is no greater person, if you follow him, than you, and he will defend you ferociously. So don't ever forget that when we come unto Jesus, the benefits are out of this world. Out of this world. And I, I wasn't sure how this was going to go with my little, my little notes, which I usually don't do, but I, I was so afraid that I would get stuck. But that was the first thing I noticed in uh, Matthew 11, was a discouraged saint. And, and then I noticed in uh, verses, um, there were some skeptical people in verses 25, and, and we live in a skeptical world. We live in a world, and this is what makes it so rough for us. We live in a very skeptical world, and most of them think they're smarter than God. And what the world is saying to us today is, really, we have, Jesus is the, the one way, the truth, and the life. The world goes many, many places to find peace, but nothing can give you rest for your soul like Jesus Christ. And the message and the keys that we have locked up inside of us, we must not be discouraged. Jesus wants to strengthen us. Maybe today, maybe that's why I've come, is to give you some hope. But in this crowd, I noticed this crowd, and they were full of skeptics. 
They were full of people that were absolutely not going to believe in Jesus. And Jesus rebuked them saying, you won't repent, you won't repent. And they were doomed sinners, they really were. You know what sends people to hell? It's not God. It's the pure rejection of Jesus. Jesus came for all. Jesus stretched out his arms and made an overpayment for every person in the sound of my voice and beyond. I believe with my whole soul that Jesus doesn't disclude anyone. You know, the world does. We get discluded in this thing or that thing, but not Jesus. He's not like that. I am absolutely convinced with my whole soul that there is not a person, a situation that Jesus Christ cannot redeem. Amen? And I, and I looked at that, and I looked at the crowd, and I was thinking about the crowd, because I'm going to tell you about another crowd in just a moment, uh, um, about a, an old-time tent revival. I'm going to tell you about my father, so it's personal to me. So I, I'm not sure the speaker's name, but I'll get to that in a moment. But as I looked at the, the, the discouraged saint, there was a doomed sinners, but the, the greatest thing in the whole wide world, there was a delivering Savior. Do you know in this world, he is still given the greatest invitation of all, come unto me. And there's a lot of people that are heavy laden. And the doctor might give you a pill, and you might feel pretty good for a little bit, but it won't give you rest for your souls. And you might can go to the psychiatrist and they can give you a relief for a little bit, but it won't give you satisfaction for your soul. I'm going to tell another story of my dear brother-in-law who put all of his faith in money. He was in stocks and bonds, and he was at a banker, and all he ever thought about was the next big thing, the next big step, the next. And he could not find rest for his soul as hard as he climbed the ladder. And I'm going to make something very clear to you. Jesus did not say that money would send you to hell. He said the love of money will trip you up, and there's a difference. Our Father is not selfish. Our Father wants to lavish gifts on us. And I want to tell you before I end that this delivering Savior, and I want to go ahead and start with my brother-in-law. Like I said, I gave you a pretty good, he passed away, and he passed away in peace last week. He did. But he didn't always start out that way. He had a very unrestful childhood. He was from an abusive, it seems like abuse runs rampant, but he had a father who the generation just kept, I mean, his father was uh, abused, so he abused the children that he had. And so in that fact, my brother-in-law looked for his purpose, and he found his purpose in money. I'm not sure that he'd ever heard really, truly, what Jesus Christ had to offer. But he looked everywhere else. And then he, he had one failed marriage, and then he went to another, and he was climbing the ladder, and he felt very, in this second marriage, very unworthy for this marriage. He felt so beneath his wife, and it just wasn't working out. And he put all of his money trying to make himself feel good, trying to find rest for his soul, trying to find the only thing that God can give. The only thing that our God Almighty can give is the peace we're looking for. The end of our search is to come unto Jesus, but he didn't know that. So he found himself looking at a divorce, losing all of his money in the stock market and found himself in a cabin with a gun next to his head, ready to blow his brains out. And somehow, some way, God stopped him. So he took a drive and he found a little Methodist church in Southview in Roanoke. And the minister, uh, he walked in the church and they were making clay pots. They were doing the lesson on Jeremiah and they were making things with their hands. So he, they just invited him to join in. And so he, not knowing what he was doing, he made something that sort of looked like a bowl, and he took it, and it, it, you know, the class was over. He was going to wait for the minister to come in, and he dropped his bowl, and he said, oh, my goodness, that's my life. My life. It's shattered, and it's broken. So he picked up the bowl, took it on to dry, and everybody exited the church, but Billy waited, desperate, not knowing what he was searching for. But there was a wise minister in that church. And he came, and he said the first thing he noticed was this tremendous, beautiful Bible under his arm. And he sat down beside Billy, and Billy just immediately said, I can't come to your church. I don't have any money. 
And the minister put his arm around him and said, never let money or anything else be the reason that you don't come unto Jesus and unto God's house. And so he ministered to Billy, and Billy came unto Jesus that day. He came unto the one that gave him rest for his soul. Was he perfect? No. Even after he found Jesus, he tried so hard to serve his master, listening to his funeral, some of the antics that he did. But Jesus is not asking us to be perfect. He's asking us all to come unto him with our burdens, our troubles, and he'll give us rest. And so that minister uh, had outlined some verses, and he handed Billy that Bible, which I now have in my possession, and said, take this home and read it. So Billy took the Bible, and he went to the window sill, and he took the broken bowl, and he said, I put that in my window sill to remind me of the day I came unto Jesus. And I wanted to... To, I only thought it was fitting today to tell his story. And I hope that some words that I speak today, when you're heavy laden and burdened, when you look at the crowd that Jesus spoke to, when you see the discouragement of the saints, I can just say, see Jesus today telling you to come unto him. Be honest. And he will give you rest for your souls. He knows what you're facing. And I'm... Um, I think the world today, I had wrote this down because I thought it was so relevant. I think some of the reason that um, our lost folks and things, they don't come unto Jesus is because they've got the wrong impression. Um, I think that the devil's yoke has been so hard for the, I know that before I came to Christ, the devil's yoke was hard. He's a hard taskmaster. Jesus is not. I mean, he tries to kill folks before Christ can find them. We know that. All of our testimonies probably shine in the same directions the day that we came to Christ when he came unto him. We must remember how it was with the old yoke. I had a terrible old yoke. I remember walking to church, and I remember the day I came unto Jesus, I ran home in the rain, and I kid you not, I felt so free. But see, the devil's yoke, when Jesus takes that old yoke, he takes the wounds that the devil has left behind before he even puts on his yoke. He pours in the oil and the salve of healing. And this is what Jesus' yoke looks like. The cross, it's two-sided. So he didn't say that our walk through this world that's not even our own home would be easy. But he is right beside us every way. He's taken our sins and all of our burdens in the middle. And I trust in this cross. I trust in his yoke, and he wants to unburden some of us today. Um, you know, in that crowd, there were Pharisees in that crowd too. And they really believed that working, working, working. Jesus didn't call us. We work for God because we love him, not because he demands it. What the law couldn't do for us, grace does. He gives us a yoke of grace. You know, I mean, people think that is so weird and so weak and so that we're so crazy because we look for something bigger than ourselves. That's the smartest thing we could ever do is to come on. I'm glad I got dumb and came to Jesus. I don't want to be the world's wisdom because it's no wisdom at all. No wisdom is found in not coming to the one that loves us, that cares for us, and that can do something for us. But I wanted to uh, tell you another story. I have one story. It's kind of gloomy at the end, but I, I mean, I think about the crowd um, that Jesus talked to and how some of them didn't respond. And I, I mean, if I'm going to tell the good, I have to tell some of the bad too. But I want to tell a story of my father. And my father also was an abused boy. Uh, his, uh, I'm kind of depressing. I don't mean to be, but uh, but I mean, he was he was abused, and his his mother had died in child birth with a, you know, would have been his sibling, and his, I mean, this had to be, I'm not sure when Billy Sunday preached, I'm not sure when, what year that was, but I know that um, he, I mean, he, I think there were some testimonies to me that, he, that he'd even beaten them, the blood out of my dad, and my dad was, um, I mean, just, you know, happy-go-lucky kid, he was just a kid, and I'm not sure if that was the speaker, but they went to a great big tent revival and his dad was sitting beside of him, and the preacher gave this invitation to come unto me. 
And he said he, he remembered, he said, oh, I hope my dad doesn't go. I don't want my dad to change because he didn't understand what coming unto Jesus meant. But his dad did go that night and he came unto Jesus. And slowly after Jesus made that transforming, um, uh, uh, only the transforming thing that Jesus can do inside our souls and transforms his heart, the beating stopped. And his dad became a gentle old man. And my dad never forgot that. And my dad received Christ uh, at 65 years old and told me that story as he came unto Christ. And Jesus didn't relieve all of my dad's cancer, but he did relieve his soul. And my dad also died in peace under the banner of the cross. And I, I hope something that I'm saying makes sense. I hope that you know that therefore there is no condemnation in those who love Christ. It's a different yoke. I want you to know that today, if you are burdened about anything, if you are heavy laden about anything, I didn't come to tell you about me. I came to tell you about the one that can do something about it. And we need to think that just because we are Christians, I'm going to tell you there's no such thing as a super Christian. I mean, it's a, it's a fantasy. It's a lie. We need each other. But most of all, we need to unburden because the invitation was given to us all. I mean, I think about John, and I think about the crowd, and I think about us, and I think about everyday life. How many times do we need to come and unburden and say, I can't do this? How many times do we fall in the devil's trap that tells us that we need to work, 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 and we can do this all along? Do you know God, the, the verse, God helps those who help themselves, that's the most ridiculous lie that ever was. That is not in the Bible. God asks us to come just as we are. God wants to do something for us today. God wants to take the isolation of your soul today, even as a believer. God wants to restore you. God came to give you life and give it more abundantly today. And I, I think about my dad and I think about the difference. Only Jesus can make the difference we need today. And I wanna ask you before I give my last story, is there anyone in this building that's heavy laden? You don't have to answer me. You don't have to but answer God. As the greatest invitation was not given by Billy Graham. It was given by Jesus Christ. Billy Graham just delivered it. Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest for your souls. Today, I'm going to, before I close, I, I want to give a special prayer. Only you and God know what's going on today with you. But I know I feel his presence in this place. I know he's moving among his people. And I know there might be a secret place in your heart that you need to give to him, full of cobwebs that you just didn't want him to see. Today will be the day. The invitation would be today. The altar is not a scary place. I don't understand why we don't just visit the altar more often. I, I didn't used to, I had a guy when I was 19 to tell me that he didn't appreciate me snotting all over the altar. I liked to never went back. But when I found the freedom in a lay speaking class, when a, a great teacher told me that the altar is the place where heaven meets earth, don't we all need it? Don't we need to make an indention and in our knee prints before the God of all universe? And I, I'm gonna close with a story and I almost hesitate to do this, but I, I can't just, to all the good stuff and not the bad, but I heard this preacher, my sister told me she had went to the revival and this preacher was talking about this guy, he was a mean old guy, just a mean old guy. And he said that he was asked, he was dying, and he asked, he was asked, he said, please come, I mean, nobody will come for this guy. And he said he was laying on his deathbed and he said he could feel that Jesus was there and all he had to do was reach out his hand and take Jesus' sin and he could be saved but he refused even in the agony of the pain of the death of saying, I'm on fire, I'm on fire. And it reminds me of this crowd that would not come unto Jesus. And with my call, at the end of this call, I wanna give each of us some encouragement. You're the light of the world. And a light cannot be hidden. And everywhere that you go, you take a key and the Jesus that lies on the inside of you is contagious. And even if you don't think that you are making a difference in this world for Jesus Christ, your mere presence is. 
The world's desperate. Today I'm going to give an invitation to come into he, to him. I hope you'll always be there for one another. Because Jesus said, if you love me, you will love one another. And by this, all men will know that you are mine. I feel today that you are his today. I don't know why he has sent me here today with this particular message, but he does. So as I close, I'm going to ask anybody that needs to be unburdened to humble ourselves and to come and to speak to our Father. And the invitation will be given. And let me close with prayer. Father, I ask as I feel the mighty move of your Holy Spirit in this place, I ask that you'll take my message, even if it was a mess, and make it a miracle in someone's life. Encourage the hearts that are in this building to keep doing. And Lord, there may be some in this building that have been struggling with the call that you've given them. Give them the strength to come unto you and take the light into the rest of the world as you have been directed to do. And Lord, in this message and in this prayer, the one thing that we can't do in order to come unto you is stay where we're at. We have to move forward and come unto you and let you transform our hearts, lives. And Lord, let us give our burdens to you today. And, and Lord, touch us in a way that we have never been touched before. Give us the strength and encouragement and if there's anyone here that's been discouraged, lighten their hearts, Lord. And Lord, take their burdens and let us yoke up today with you. And Lord, let us move through your Holy Spirit to make a difference in this world. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And before I close, I'm just going to kind of Ask anybody that needs to come, come, and just, you don't have to look around. And, you know, when people come to the altar, that doesn't always mean it's a bad thing. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, I go to the altar almost every Sunday because, I mean, every knee's going to bow one day. I like to bow mine now. But um, it's not a bad, ugly place. It's not a scary place. Just remember, it is where heaven meets earth. Anybody that wants to come, please come. Anyone that needs to um, makes their way to the altar, um, we'll go ahead with the closing hymn. That is the Lord of the Dance. Please stand as you're able, and anyone that wants to come to the altar, please also do so. Number 261.
thank everyone for worshiping with us this morning. Wilma, thank you so much for your message. Now, as we get ready to leave the Lord's house this morning, please hear this benediction. It's from Numbers. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Now go in peace, knowing that God loves you very much. Thank you.